It's exactly two minutes to one o'clock. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on KTN News for News Desk on this 20, on this third day of April 2017. Always a pleasure to have you tuned in. A lot happening in the day. We will be crossing over to Migori County to speak to our reporter Rashid Ronald, who will be uh, telling us of the latest uh, from there, the tension over grounds for Jeanette Mohammed uh, to get the uh, to announce his uh, candidature. Well, we'll also be taking a look at the ODM primaries, what you are seeing live there, a member of parliament there from Mombasa County. The primaries are set to officially begin uh, by the end of the week, but today, those who are getting the direct nomination papers were receiving them today, but we will be bringing you more details from there from uh, the ODM premises. We'll get to that later on, but first, let's take a look at the highlights. ODM aspirants receive their nomination certificates as unopposed candidates for the August polls. It is illegal. IEBC chairperson now tells ODM on plans to set up a parallel tiling center. And Kenyans say they will not consider someone's education or credibility when voting. Good afternoon, my name is Akisa Wandera. Let's start off from Migori County where there was tension this morning in Migori as a petrol bomb was thrown inside new ODM County offices that was set to be opened by Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho. The tension was also made worse by reports that the county had barred a Sunnah East Member of Parliament, Jeanette Mohammed, from using the stadium to launch his campaign. Let's speak to Sunnah East Member of Parliament, Jeanette Mohammed to get an understanding of what exactly is going on down there. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, what complaints do you have against the governor of Migori County exactly? See, Linda, I mean, uh, well, Akisa, we had planned to, to, to do our function at the, at the Migori Stadium and uh, the governor decided not to allow us to use the stadium. He's, he's saying the stadium is, is still under renovation and it has been under renovation for the last four years, since 2013. And but we have used some other two uh, two times before uh, to to do some functions of OTM in that stadium, and that is the only big facility that we have in the area. So the governor decided to tell us that uh, it is under renovation and will not be able to use. But we see there are political connotations in his statement. I don't think he was honest in reviewing us the venue. But uh, anyway, we got an, another venue, and now we are doing our launch at Poster Ground. And we are set to go in the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes or so. What are these connotations you say you read from the governor's actions? The governor thinks that I am supporting one of his opponents, who is a very strong person on the ground. And uh, uh, it is my, you know, that's the, his major. His complaint is majorly based on that. He feels that uh, I'm supporting one of his opponents and, uh, and he wants to use now his ex executive authority just like the way Jubilee does in Nairobi to frustrate uh, you know, our issues here. Well, you've mentioned that the governor said that that particular stadium was being renovated. Um, if you all knew that this particular stadium was being renovated, why didn't you choose the nearby primary school, which uh, we understand is open for such activities? No, the schools are now on. There are exams actually going on in all primary schools. The nearby school we visited, they told us that they are... Today they have exams and they have not yet closed, number one. And then number two, we have not used the... Uh, we, we have used the, 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 the venue before. We have used the day when we were released from Pangani. That's where we did our event. That's where we, we held our huge rally in that place. So it, it is just an excuse to deny us that, uh, you know, to use the venue. And he feels that, you know, he has a strong feeling that I don't support him. So the, that's the only reason why I have refused. This but, new... uh, but we have gotten a new venue now, which is nearby, which is not far. All right, this new ODM office that has been vandalized, we understand that petrol bomb was thrown into it. What exactly happened? You see, the governor has his own parallel office, which he, he claims to have donated to the party. 
which one time he wanted to the party leader to open when he, the party leader visited the county, and uh, the party leader did not open the, the office. Now the main the bona fide of, the bona fide officials of the party here, the county chairman and the treasurer and the secretary, have their own offices, which new offices that they have they have acquired, which they wanted the deputy party leader to open. So as we speak now, we are opening a party office at uh, at Kihancha, a place called Kihancha in Korea. East constituency, in Korea West constituency. Then after that, we are going to open the same same office that you wanted to petrol bomb. Finally, before I let you go, how bad was the damage? No, no, nothing much, nothing much. It was just an attempt to do something, but nothing much. Nothing has happened. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Sooner is Member of Parliament, Jeanette Mohammed, joining us live by way of phone from Migori County. Of course, our reporter Rashid Ronald will be giving us more details about uh, what happened there this morning. But still on politics, let's focus on what is happening at the Bomas of Kenya, where Nairobi Governor Evan Skidero will be among ODM aspirants who will receive their nomination certificate as unopposed candidates for the August polls. There are aspirants who do not have opponents and will not be subject to nominations, hence qualifying for automatic nominations to vie for the seats they applied for. Let's just cross over there live and listen in to Homer Bay women representative uh, speaking there. Because of the order, because of the transparency, because of the fairness. And I just have one message to all our aspirants all over the country that you can see what the ODM board is going to do, even with the certificates after the nomination. So we want, we want to urge everybody to keep order, to keep peace, to hold nominations in a peaceful environment, so that after the nomination, Sisi Wote Tutarudi Apa Bonos, while the candidates Wengine Pia Wakuche Watuzwe Makaratasi. Last video, Baba Tuko Tayari, Tuko tayari kutemea Kenya nzima kuhakikisha ya kwamba 8 of August uko ndani ya State House na umebeba ile bibilia ya kusema mimi Raila Amolo Odinga na hapa ya kwamba nitatumikia wa Kenya wote. Asanteni sana na kwa niyama ya watu wa Homo Bay ambayo nimewawakilisha na sema asante sana sana. Ah, ninge penda ku tamu umuita Stella Koech. Stella Koech, aina moi, aska nda na moi. A live event there at the Bomas of Kenya, an event there by ODM as aspirants receive direct nomination tickets because they are unopposed in the seats they have applied for. And Gladys Wanga, Homa Bay County Women Representative there, just received her certificate and addressed the crowds there at the Bomas of Kenya. Let's stay with ODM and focus on that statement by ODM leader Raila Odinga that the National Super Alliance will tally and announce its own results for comparison with the results released by IABC. The coalition plans to have a committee of 50 people for every polling station who will act as party agents and voter marshals. The move to have an alternative telling center has been rejected by the government and NASA told, has been told to respect the constitution. State House spokesperson Manoa Esipisu said the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is the only body mandated by the constitution to run the elections. Let's listen in to what the NASA leaders had to say about this before we have a conversation about the legality of this statement here in studio. All right, let's now speak to Peter Wanyama. He is a constitutional lawyer joining me in studio now. Thank you very much, Peter, for coming in. We've just had that statement from ODM and opposition leader Raila Odinga. How legal is it? Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I think it undermines the, the integrity and dignity of the electoral process if we allow political parties to 
uh, be doing the work which IEBC is supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. From a constitutional standpoint, it's only the IEBC which is empowered to manage the electoral process, including uh, uh, announcing the results. And therefore, any mechanism outside uh, the IEBC is really, uh, uh, in my view, a process that undermines the institutional credibility of the entire electoral process. What I will, what I will, what I will encourage uh, political parties to do is that you can maintain your data. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can collect your data in the back of, of your offices. But announcing these results has a legal and constitutional implication. And uh, uh, if I may add, probably a political implication. Mm. We don't want to go the way of Gambia and uh, countries in, uh, in, 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 in West Africa in terms of, uh, of uh, political parties uh, then uh, coming up, uh, announcing the results. Yeah. And then, of course, the supporters will then say that uh, we only recognize that result. So in my view, we need to really refrain uh, from, uh, uh, from doing that. We need to support IEBC. It is a body that is the only... Uh, it's mandated by the Constitution mm -hmm. to manage the electoral process. Well, since um, Occupy Harambe Avenue or Occupy Anniversary Towers, yeah, uh, yeah. the protest uh, to oust the previous uh, commissioners, the IABC has been working really hard to restore mm. the uh, Kenyans' confidence in yes, this yes. particular institution. Mm. By these statements we are seeing from top-notch leaders in the political space, yeah. what are this, does this do to the image of IABC? Uh, there's a major, major... Uh, a problem that we might face as a country if we don't learn in building uh, building institutions. IEBC, in my view, is a new institution. Uh, we need to ensure that whatever we do from uh, from a political standpoint is something which builds the image of and, 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 and credibility of the institution to manage the electoral process. Mm -hmm. In my view, if, 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 if you look at the, the way the commission has, uh, uh, were appointed and uh, the way they were selected, and the entire legal framework which was negotiated between the political parties with a view to uh, develop a compromise, in my view, that was a process of incrementally increasing the credibility of the, of, 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 of the commission. And in my view, we need to give the commission time and opportunity to manage the electoral uh, process. If we make those statements which we see as, uh, political leaders making in terms of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, 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 of actually doing the work of IBC, mm -hmm. uh, then in my view we will be creating a very dangerous president and uh, maybe we, it, it, it's time to alert IECC. Perhaps we are laying basis for post-election violence. So Remember that political parties in Kenya uh, 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 create their support based on tribes. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Jubilee uh, coalition, there are two dominant tribes in Jubilee. If you look at the Code Coalition, the, 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 the NASA Coalition, again, that aspect of tribe uh, really informs political uh, building in Kenya. So if you attempt to create uh, that division by saying that we are the ones who have won and therefore we need to, uh, uh, to govern the country, and then the other side, of course, then creates um, um, uh, uh, the opposite uh, yeah. Uh, basis and all that. So it, it becomes a problem. That's why it is important. The, the constitutional legal framework has a process uh, to let an independent body, the, elect, the, 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 the IEBC, to mm -hmm. do that process, to manage the entire electoral circle. And if anyone has a problem right. with it, there are mechanisms for resolving disputes. Yes. Uh, the, the, but yes. before we, they get to the mechanisms yes, to resolve yes. this dispute, quickly before I let you go, yes, yes. what can parties do? Because that we have a history of disgruntled voice, voices after every election. What can parties do to ensure that at the end of an election they don't say, oh, kura ziliibwa? What, what would you advise political you know, parties what to I, do? Uh, what I would advise political parties to do is that they need to learn the, that the electoral process, the, 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 the election results are not a do or die situation. Uh, we need to learn to accept the election results. Whether credible or not credible, we need to accept those election uh, results. If they are not credible, then the Constitution has provided a mechanism for you to challenge the, uh, the, the electoral uh, results. If it's at the, uh, at the local level, there's a process. At the national level, if you want to challenge the electoral uh, results for the president, there's a mechanism for doing that. So let's learn to accept the electoral results as a, as a way of also building the institutions that we have, institutions which we have established uh, in the Constitution. Otherwise, we'll be setting uh, this uh, country to a very, very dangerous president. Okay. We've witnessed this in Ivory Coast, okay. uh, Gambia, and we don't want to take... Uh, Kenya uh, through that path. Peter, thank you yeah. so much thank for coming much. in. Peter Wanyama is a constitutional lawyer here as we talk about the sentiments from opposition leader Raila Odinga about uh, setting up a parallel tiling centre during the August 8th polls. Let's take a short break. Don't go too far. We still have a lot lined up for you here on KTN News Desk.